Hello friends! For today's video, I wanted to go through a list of some books that I recently DNF'd, as well as what I'm calling library saves. And what I mean by library saves are books that I was able to get through the library, either the physical copy or, and also in combination with, the audiobook from Hoopla or Libby. If you've never heard of those apps, they are through the library Hoopla. If they have something available, you can just automatically download it. There's no waiting time and they have ebooks and audiobooks. And then with Libby, they have ebooks and audiobooks as well, but they treat them almost like they would a physical copy where if people have it reserved, then you have to wait until your place in line to finally get that book in. And this has actually been incredibly helpful, one, in saving a lot of money by going through the library, but then also it actually helps me stay motivated to read. And I know that's something a lot of people sometimes can struggle with is they don't know what to read, they're a mood reader, they just find themselves kind of slacking sometimes when it's really a goal of theirs. They really do want to read a little bit more. And so I find by using the library like this so frequently that it's actually really helped me consistently pick books up, especially when you see other people are waiting for a copy. It kind of gets you into gear and you're like, okay, I gotta get this, I gotta get around to this now. <laughs> but anyway, so many of the books this year that I've picked up, I've picked up through the library and I wanted to start incorporating this into my unhauls or into my DNFs because I just wanna give some more attention to libraries. Starting with the DNFs, we'll kick it off with A Lesson in Vengeance. This is a dark academia story. We follow a young woman who is going to the school, but you gather pretty quickly that her roommate, something happened to her, and our character decided she still wanted to go to the school despite all the memories there are of her and her roommate, all the experiences they shared. But then also there's kind of this question of maybe her roommate's not entirely gone and it seems like there's going to be some kind of haunting to it. And I didn't dislike any of, I, I didn't dislike the writing. The characters were fine. Everything was fine. I just, I'm discovering I'm kind of picky when it comes to dark academia. It could just be that I haven't picked up enough of it or that I don't know what I like with dark academia. It's not a subgenre I've read extensively. So if you have your own recommendations for dark dark academia, feel free to leave them. But this one I was just not finding myself all that engaged with. It kind of felt like familiar territory. I think that's a difficult thing about any subgenre in general is that they tend to utilize similar tropes or similar themes. And this one, it seemed like was, it had all the ingredients for a dark academia story. Just maybe I don't like those ingredients or maybe it didn't have enough to it that was as unique as I would have liked. And anyway, I didn't end up continuing on with this one, obviously, because that's why it's a DNF. The next two would be Bitter Medicine and Lady Scoundrels, or the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, I think is the is the full title. And both of these I DNF'd almost immediately, so I can't even really elaborate too much on what they're about and what the writing style was like or the characters. I just didn't... It's one of those things where these books... Hopefully you're not deterred from picking them up if you've seen them around and you thought they sounded interesting. I'm by no means saying that these aren't worth picking up. It's just that with as many books as there are to read, I just find that if I pretty quickly am not connecting to a story, I'm not really finding myself invested in it. For ones like this where there are more easily digestible, because certain books, of course, take more time to develop. But both of these seemed like the kind that they didn't require. They're not epic fantasy. It's not like a really slow moving kind of world where you have so much to take in. They're meant to be the kind that you pick up and you kind of are immediately into. <laughs> and I wasn't. And I just kind of moved on to something else. Uh, after that, we have The Battle Drum. This is the sequel to The Final Strife. I was already on the fence about whether I wanted to continue on with this series because the first one was kind of middle of the road for me. I liked the world and I, I liked the amount of stakes that were established in the book. There were some twists and turns. There's kind of a mystery and some world building reveals that I found interesting, but the characters, the way they speak, the way they behave, they just felt a little immature to me sometimes and that 
in combination with some of the horrific things that happened, some of the extreme acts of violence and the really high extreme stakes, it was just not the balance that I was looking for. I do like when you can accomplish having really high stakes, but then you can have those kind of campy, silly, funny moments. If you get that perfect balance, it's probably gonna be a new favorite. But when that balance is just a little off, then a lot of it doesn't end up really working for me. So I already was, like I said, on the fence, but I picked up the next one and pretty quickly the characters <laughs> were kind of annoying me again. So I just decided to put this one down. The last for the DNFs would be Priory of the Orange Tree for the second time I have DNF'd this book. And I don't mean to, I got farther than I did the last time. The first time I picked it up, I was traveling and I was reading here and there and I just knew I wasn't really taking the story in. And it's a long story, there's a lot to it. So I didn't think that was fair to the book to keep going when the foundation at the beginning that's established, I didn't take in very well. So I figured, okay, I'll restart the book and then we'll go from there. And I did restart it and I was enjoying it and I got further than I did the first time. And I just kind of picked up other things and then didn't keep going. So I need to pick this one up again. I'm very curious if any of you have uh, done that same thing or if you are better about continuing on with books that you start. Now for the library saves. So almost all of them, it was the audiobooks that I got. So I'll start with The Magician's Daughter. This one I got through the app Libby and I ended up really, really enjoying this one. So yay, I did end up purchasing a physical copy. So using the library, I discovered something that I greatly enjoyed. <laughs> Next we have fourth wing. Somehow I got the audiobook immediately and I got it through Libby. I think it's because before all of the intense hype and momentum happened, I, I, I picked the book up right before that. And as a result, I guess I was the first person in my general area, my zip code, to request the audiobook. So, I, and I'd already purchased the physical copy. <laughs> so I, I already had it. Uh, but the audiobook did help me with immersion reading, so uh, I got through it. I don't know if reading the audiobook helped. Anyway, The Foxglove King. This is a book that I had gotten through a Fairy Loot book subscription, and the audiobook was available through Libby. So I was able to listen to the audiobook through that. Uh, I mentioned immersion reading a second ago. If you don't know what that is, it's where you listen to the audiobook and read the physical copy at the same time. I used to think that sounded really bizarre. And to me, I was like, but I'm reading it. Why would I have someone else read it to me at the same time? But it actually really helps stay focused, I find, because if you've ever experienced this, then you'll relate. But sometimes when you're reading something, the noise of whatever else is going on around you or your mind wandering, it can make you go, wait a second, what did I just read? And then you have to go back. But when you have your eyes looking at the page and you have something in your ear, it kind of helps prevent that from happening. So I find I'm able to stay focused a lot more. So anyway, that's what immersion reading is. And I did that with The Foxglove King. After that, we have Untethered Sky, excuse me, Untethered Sky, also through Libby. And this one, I didn't have the physical copy. I still don't, but I do plan to eventually try to find it at a local bookstore or maybe when there's a sale at the bookstore or something like that. So uh, this one is one that definitely I will be picking up, but I did listen to it purely through the audiobook from Libby. Silver Under Nightfall, this is one I already owned and I listened to the audiobook through Libby. So I did the combination of physical and audio and this is one that I um, didn't love. So I ended up taking it into my local bookstore. It was a part of an unhaul. After that, we have Chaos and Flame. This one was very kindly sent to me by the publisher. Unfortunately though, it didn't work for me, but I was able to do immersion reading through, once again, the app Libby. Uh, I have more about this one in a new releases wrap up. And in fact, if you're interested in hearing more extensive thoughts about any of these, I will have new releases wrap ups or any other sorts of videos I've done where I go more in depth about them if you wanna know about the premise and such things. So Chaos and Flame though, 
I talked about in a recent new fantasy wrap up. And then uh, the wishing game, this was something I got through book of the month. I got the audiobook through Libby. This is one that I was not necessarily planning to pick up anytime soon because I try to prioritize fantasy. I know that's what a lot of you <laughs> read. And so I tried to pick that up and then let you know about fantasy releases. But I went ahead and put a hold on Libby because I did really think it sounded good. And uh, I ended up getting the audiobook pretty quick, which surprised me because this one has been pretty popular. And I'm so glad I own a copy, a physical copy already, because I really, really ended up enjoying this one. It's one of my favorites of the year. So I'm really glad that I was able to not only get the physical copy, but by getting the audiobook through Libby, it kind of encouraged me to pick it up sooner. One for my enemy. I got both the physical and the audiobook through the library using Libby. I didn't care for this one. So yay, library for saving me some money. Um, after that, I already owned Elantris, but the app Hoopla had Elantris on audio and the particular library branch actually has the graphic audio version. So maybe check out Hoopla if you have access to Hoopla and see if you've ever been interested. If you don't know what those are, it's where they have a full cast that does all the different voices and they have sound effects and everything like that. So they had that for both Elantris and Hope of Elantris, which I thought was pretty cool. They also had Emperor Soul, and I recently did a spoiler discussion for Elantris. So it was really nice to get to refresh on this story and then also pick up Emperor Soul for the first time through not only the physical copies, but then also having the audiobooks and being able to check out graphic audio for the first time because I'd never actually tried them before. So that was really cool. <laughs> Sorry, I keep doing this. Uh, after that, All Systems Red, I got both the physical and audiobook through Hoopla. Uh, All Systems Red, I really enjoyed. If you don't know, that's Murderbot. And I have since checked out a bunch of the rest of them from the library. So I plan to devour as much of Murderbot as I can. And I really quite enjoyed this one. I do plan to eventually try to get a copy. I saw a few copies at my local used bookstore, but they weren't used. They happened to have been new copies. And I'm like, oh, these are kind of expensive. <laughs> and I had some store credit, but I was like, uh, I'll save my store credit. Maybe I'll find them actually used at some point, but I do want to pick them up. The Flat Share, this was a contemporary romance. I got both the physical and the audiobook through the library. This was fantastic. I actually did a video with this and All Systems Read where I talked about both of these, very different from each other, but that was a very good reading week. The Last Heir to Blackwood Library immediately was on Hoopla, which surprised me because it was a new release. This one didn't end up working for me either. So thank you, library, you saved me money. Clean Air and Buy the Book. One is sci-fi kind of fantasy post-apocalyptic, and then the other one is a contemporary romance with a little bit of fairy tale retelling mixed in. And I picked these both up for a little bit of an experimental reading where I was kind of testing out what would happen if I just picked up books on a whim that I hadn't really heard people talk about and compare that experience to the books that I pick up as a result of your recommendations, social media. So I'll have that video linked, but they were both fine. I'm not upset I read them, but I am glad I got them through the library. And both of these, the physical and audiobooks, I got through the library. I own a copy of Kindred. I was able to listen to the audiobook through Hoopla, so I got that one. And then Fall and Rise, which is a nonfiction about 9-11. Very, very, very emotional book. I listened to the audiobook and got the physical from the library. And then I can't say I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's not the right word for this book, but I did think it was very well done. So I didn't, I did end up buying a copy of this after picking it up. Anyway, that's it for some DNFs and then also some library saves. The library saved me a lot of money by helping me discover ones that I didn't end up actually liking that much. And then also, of course, it made my reading with immersion reading a little better for the ones I already had physical copies of. And then it allowed me to figure out which ones I really liked that I was willing to spend some money on. So yay, libraries. Unfortunately, some were, you know, we had some DNFs this last uh, few months, but that's okay. <laughs> Let me know what have you been picking up recently? What have you DNF'd recently? And then have you been checking out your local libraries? But thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.